Mrs. Dando here, the school counselor at Ridgeview Elementary School. No matter what building you're joining us from, Wilderway, Dunlap Grade School, Hickory Grove, Banner, I'm so glad you're with us today. Why? Because I'm here with this week's counseling in the classroom lesson, again. And this week, I wanna follow up a little bit on what we talked about last week. Now, if you weren't there last week, we read this great book called It's Brave to Be kind. Basically, this is what happened in the book. A kid stood up for another kid and included that kid who was a little bit different. And it got me thinking. I bet a lot of you, when you heard that book, thought to yourself, I really want to be like that kid. I want to stand up for others. But maybe you're not quite sure how to do that. So then I got this great idea. <laughs> how about I teach you how to do that? Today we're gonna learn about a really big word. Older kids, I'm hoping you've heard this word before, but maybe you haven't. The word today, assertive. Anybody? Surely somebody knows what that word is, right? Well, I'm gonna teach you. Have you ever had somebody ask you to do something that you really didn't wanna do? No, I don't mean like your mom asking you to clean your room or your teacher asking you to do homework. I mean, have you ever had like a kid on the bus tell you to do something that you know you shouldn't do? Or anybody ever have like that friend that always chooses the game no matter what? Or maybe like our book last week, you ever see a kid do something that they shouldn't be doing but you're not quite sure how to react? You need to be assertive. Assertive is just a really big word to say. You know how to communicate in a healthy and respectful way what you want and how you're feeling. Assertive is when we use a calm, clear, firm voice to let somebody know how we're feeling and sometimes what we want them to do. You see, assertive is a good way to communicate. Sometimes though, when we want to communicate with somebody, we go about it in the wrong way. There are two other words I should probably tell you about. The first one, aggressive. Surely you've heard aggressive. Aggressive is when we tell somebody what we want, but we don't do it in a respectful way. And we don't use like a firm voice, we use the angry voice, probably an angry look on our face. Sometimes maybe even use some words that, we shouldn't use. And then on the other side, that other word I want you to know is passive. Passive is just when, well, we don't really let people know how we're feeling or what we want. And that's not always good. So rather than being aggressive or passive, we want to be in the middle. We want to be assertive. So I want to teach you how to be assertive. And you should probably know by now, I have a book that I'm going to share with you, of course. The book we're going to listen to today that's going to teach us about being assertive is a book I'm sure many of you have heard before. And honestly, it's top notch. One of my faves. The book is One by Katherine Atoshi. Let's get into it. One by Katherine Atoshi. Blue was a quiet color. He enjoyed looking up at the sky, floating on the waves, and on days he felt daring, splashing in the rain puddles. Every once in a while, he wished he could be more sunny, like yellow, or bright, like green, more regal, like purple, or outgoing, like orange. But overall, he liked being blue except when he was with Red. Red was a hothead. He liked to pick on blue. Red is a great color, he'd say. Red is hot, blue is not. Then, blue would feel bad about being blue. Sometimes yellow comforted blue. Blue is a very nice color, she'd say. But Yellow never said that in front of Red. She never said, 
stop picking on blue. Green, purple, and orange thought blue was nice too, but they never told red to stop either. Every time red said something mean and no one spoke up, he got bigger and bigger and bigger. Soon, Red grew so big that everyone was afraid of him. No one dared stop him. Red picked on all the colors. Then, everyone felt a little blue. Until one came. He had a different shape with bold strokes and squared corners. He was funny. He made the colors laugh. Red saw this and got very hot. Stop laughing, he told yellow. Stop laughing, he told green. Stop laughing, he told purple and orange. And they did. Red rolled up to one. Stop laughing, he told him. But one stood up straight like an arrow and said, no. Red was mad, but one wouldn't budge. So Red rolled away. One turned to the colors and said, if someone is mean and picks on me, I, for one, stand up and say no. Then Yellow felt brave and said, me too. Green agreed and said, me three. Then purple became four and orange became five. Blue saw the colors change. He wanted to count. Red grew red hot. He felt left out. He grew hotter and hotter and hotter. Red raced over to Blue and said what he always did. Red is hot, blue is not. But this time, Blue stood up tall and became six. Red can be really hot, he said, but blue can be super cool. Red blew a fuse and tried to roll over blue. But everyone took a stand and said, no. Seeing them standing tall made Red feel very, very, very small. Then Red turned even redder and began rolling away. Blue called out, can Red be hot and Blue be cool? Red stopped in his tracks. Red can count two, said one. Red rocked and rolled and turned into seven. Everyone counts, they shouted. Then Red laughed and joined the fun. Sometimes it just takes one. Can you guys guess who the assertive character was in that book? One. One used his voice in a healthy and respectful way to let Red know what he wanted and he wanted red to stop now we also have an example of aggressive in that book red red was really aggressive red was loud red was unkind red was disrespectful red wasn't communicating in an assertive way red was communicating in an aggressive way we also have an example of passive in there too. Really, all the other colors were pretty passive, but especially blue. Blue had some really strong feelings of sadness and didn't speak up at first. And you know what? I bet all the other colors had some strong feelings, but they didn't speak up at first either. That's called being passive. Remember, aggressive, passive, and we want to be in the middle. So let's practice what that sounds like. And yes, big kids, fifth graders, who are probably laughing, maybe, I don't know, you're gonna practice too. I always like to practice assertiveness with something I call 
an iMessage. And no, I don't mean like when you text each other on your iPads or your iPods. An iMessage is a healthy, assertive way to communicate your feelings to other people. The reason it's called an iMessage is because it starts with the letter I. I. An iMessage sounds like this. I feel blank. You fill in that blank with your feeling. When you blank. You fill in that blank with what the person is doing that you don't like. Please stop. Please don't do that again. Please listen to me. So I'll give you an example. Let's say at recess, a group of students chases you every day and you're just not a fan of it anymore. You really want them to stop. We don't wanna be aggressive and call mean names in order to get them to stop. That's not healthy. We also don't wanna be passive and keep letting them bother us. That's unhealthy for you too. We're going to be assertive. Listen to my iMessage. I feel angry when you chase me on the playground. Please stop. Did you hear my voice? It was calm, but it was also firm. I don't want to use a voice like this. I feel angry when you chase me on the playground. Please stop. Why would I not want to sound like that? Probably because nobody could hear what I was saying. Also, they might not take you seriously. I also don't want to say it in an aggressive way. Hey you, knock it off. That's not my style. An assertive way uses a calm, firm voice, good eye contact, and let the person know what it is you're feeling and what you want them to do with an iMessage. You can use it even with brothers and sisters at home. I feel really annoyed when you get into my toys. Please don't do that anymore. You can even use it when you're feeling sad. You can use an iMessage all sorts of places because an iMessage respectfully communicates what you want, what you feel, and what you need to happen in order for you to be calm and okay. Remember my friends, we don't wanna be aggressive, but we also don't wanna be passive. We need to practice being assertive, using our voice, using our eyes to let people know how we're feeling. Try it out this week. Maybe you have something happen between you and a friend. Try using that I message. I feel blank when you blank. Please, can you blank? Maybe try it out in your classroom after you watch this video. And if you see your school counselor in the hallway, let them know how it went for you. Assertiveness is an important skill to have. And now you have it. And dumb lab students, as always, you belong, you matter, and you are worthy.